everyone. Uh, my name is Charlene Clark. I am with Signature Canvas Makers. Uh, we're in the Phoebus section of Hampton. Um, we started our business in 2005. Um, my time, my husband was still, my husband Chandler was still serving in the United States Navy down in New Orleans. I um, retired from that in 2006. And um, we came back here to Hampton and started, he started working uh, as a contractor with, um, with another canvas shop. Um, we actually opened our own shop in 2008. And in 2010, um, I left a 23 year career in hospitality sales and marketing to uh, join him full time and run the business. Um, we are designers and manufacturers of canvas and textile solutions for government, commercial, and recreational markets. Um, we are not sale makers. Um, we do not even repair sales any longer, um, but we do have a partnership with um, Evolution Sales. They actually have a sales office in our shop. Um, so we can certainly put you in touch with people if you do need, um, if you do need some sales um, repair, sale repairs. Uh, so today we're going to talk about, briefly talk about caring for your canvas. Um, and just some tips on how you can protect your investment and keep things lasting a little bit longer. Um, so let's first talk about fabric. Um, at, at a very basic level, um, you want to make sure that you always rinse your, your canvas with fresh water. Um, never use a pressure washer. Uh, some of these things may sound obvious, but trust me, we have seen them all. Uh, when people bring in shredded things and say, well, I just pressure washed it. Um, and you, <laughs> I can't imagine why it all fell apart on me. Uh, so you just basically want to take a fresh water um, rinse to it um, when you're done, you know, several times, you know, several times a week or, you know, at least a few times, um, you know, every couple of weeks after you've been out on the water sailing. Um, for general cleaning, just a mild soap and lukewarm water is generally fine. Um, you know, if there's a you know some spots, you might want to use a soft bristle brush or a, or a um, or a sponge. Um, we do not recommend that you use laundry detergents. Um, there are phosphates in your laundry detergents, and they will deplete the water repellency of the fabric, especially if you're using a product like Sombrella, which is an acrylic. Um, always rinse it thoroughly, the soap and water thoroughly off the, off the canvas and let that air dry. Um, again, just because we've seen it before, never put your canvas in the dryer. Um, it will break it down it, if you're not using, if it's not sewn with Teflon thread, um, it will very well have a tendency to, um, to shred the thread. Um, stubborn stains, you know, again, this is primarily Sombrella, but this, a lot, most of these things will also work for products like Stamoid, um, Breakwater, things, things of that nature. Um, stubborn stains, we generally recommend a non-chlorine bleach and mild soap mixture with lukewarm water. Um, rinse thoroughly. Um, please be careful, though, if you're using bleach. Um, if you do not if your product is sewn with a 138 or a 92 thread um, and not PTFE or what they can, what is the what is also Teflon thread, um, bleach will have a tendency to eat away at the threads. So you want to make sure that you are working in small areas um, and not soaking on the whole canvas um, because again that bleach will really eat away at those threads. Um, anytime you're storing your canvas, um, you know, before you're going to store your canvas, always clean it first, um, allow it to dry thoroughly, and store it in a well-ventilated area. Um, for clears, or what uh, most people will call glass, um, the um, best thing, again, always rinse it with, with fresh water. You want to make sure that before you start to rub anything on your glass that you are removing the salt, um, any kind of particulates, um, dirt, uh, off of the glass, um, any, any type of product, even the, the products with a scratch resistant coating. Um, if you are rubbing them with salt um, all over them, they are going to scratch. 
Um, there's different types of glass that you'll hear about. Um, the, probably the most, you know, what the generic of uh, what people call isinglass. Um, isinglass is a generic term. It's like saying a crescent wrench. Um, isinglass is basically uh, probably the most popular brand right now is Stratoglass. And that is a pressed, what they call a pressed polish. Um, Stratoglass is um, a coated product. Um, any products that are not, that are coated, if they're not treated correctly, you will find over time that that coating will start to break down. Um, it will also start to break down naturally. Um, many canvas shops um, will often recommend using a non-coated product because it, it will have a tendency to break down um, less quickly. Um, however, uh, the downside to that is that it will scratch more, uh, more quickly. Um, so you've got your, your flexible glass, which is your pressed polish, i.e. strata glass. Um, a polycarbonate, there's those are, that is a rigid um, glass. Again, um, mostly what we're using in, in rigid polycarbonate is not coated. Um, and then there's also the next step up from that is an acrylic. Um, acrylic cannot be sewn through, so it requires a bonding process. Um, we are easy to see why authorized dealers um, and easy to see why is the is the um, is the b uh, branded bonding um, bonding uh, term. Um, so always always rinse first. Um, use a mild soap, a water mixture. Never use anything like Rain-X. Um, anything that has some products like Rain-X, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's going to help to keep the, keep the water beaded away. Um, none of these marine products are set, are, are set up for the, um, for set up like a preferred product like Rain-X. Um, Rain-X will actually cause your glass to burn when the sun hits it. Um, so definitely don't use any, anything like that. Always stick with products that are recommended by the manufacturer. Um, if you're using Stratoglass, they will often um, you know, recommend IMAR products, IMAR products, IMAR products. Um, for mostly everything, um, we use a product called 210 Cleaner and Polish. Um, it's, it's a lot less expensive, super easy to use. You can spray it on and, and wipe it off and it cleans and polishes and, and buffs at the same time. Um, and it is safe to use on strata glass and polycarbonates as well, as well as acrylics. Um, make sure when you're handling your glass, you don't want to use, uh, make sure you don't have any grease or oils, uh, suntan lotion on, um, on your hands. Uh, that will again leave, um, leave a residual on your, um, on your glass that will cause it to, um, to cloud over time. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times people will ask about, you know, with the flexible products like strata glass, um, if you're a sailboater or even a power boater, you will roll up those, often roll up those panels to get air, airflow. Um, any kind of constant rolling, even, um, even with, a, with a coated product, um, will cause scratching. Um, most of the time we recommend, um, if you do need to scratch, if you do need to roll them, um, consider taking a soft towel or a, a piece of, uh, cut up a sheet, a soft sheet, and roll that into, um, into the glass as you're rolling it up and securing it, uh, securing it up. That will certainly help to keep the, the scratching um, at, a, at a minimum. Um, when you're storing, anytime you can store your panels flat, um, it certainly is better. Um, again, store them be with a, a clean, you know, with sheets, soft sheets or soft towels in between soft sheets or soft towels. That's the best way to store them. Um, if you do have to store them rolled up, best to roll them within, uh, within a towel or a sheet. Um, and, and certainly when you have them on your boat, um, if you're going to leave your boat for any period of time, never leave your panels rolled up. Um, the moisture will get in there. It will cause um, it will cause the the glass to to cloud um, and potentially burn when the sun um, when the sun hits it for if it's there for any period of time. Uh, marine vinyls. Um, many of us have cushions on our boat in our cockpit. 
Um, you know, these are best to wipe down with a mild soap and water, rinse um, very lightly. You never want to leave water, you never want to hose off your vinyl. Um, you'll see, we'll talk about um, pinking. If anyone has ever heard of a, of a problem with marine vinyls called pinking, where a, a white or an off-white um, vinyl will suddenly start to have all of these pink spots on it. Um, that is actually a type of bacteria um, that exists in fresh water. It is not harmful to humans, um, but, it, but it is unfortunately harmful to a lot of marine vinyls. Um, so you never want to hose off your cushions. Um, always wipe them down with mild soap and water. Um, you want to keep those your exterior vinyls clean um, frequently. You want to do, keep those frequent or clean them frequently, I should say. Um, again, using avoid using things like sunscreen when you're sitting on them. Um, never leave them damp. Um, these are all things the moisture is what this bacteria adheres to. Um, bottom line, keep them clean and dry as much as possible. Um, and once you start to see this pinking, there is no way to remove it. It must, you, you're going to have to replace the vinyl. Um, the good news is that there are some vinyls now that um, are guaranteed that do have warranties against pinking. Um, any Naga Hide product um, is guaranteed against pinking. And Sombrella just came out um, about a year and a half ago with a product called Horizon. Um, it's a brand new product. It's a, an engineered synthetic leather. Um, and they do have the best warranty in the industry right now. Um, they have a five-year limited warranty on the product itself. Um, but they also now have a three-year warranty against pinking. Um, so definitely a great product and it's, it's, it's got a beautiful soft hand. Um, it's really a beautiful product, a huge variety of colors that match all the different, so, uh, so many of the different Sunbrella um, colors that you're, you're familiar with. All right, a little bit about snaps and fasteners. Um, you know, we're going to talk about snaps and fasteners and zippers. Um, the best way to keep any of um, your hardware and your zippers um, functioning well is to use them. Um, cleaning the snaps, the snap stud, which is the part that goes into the boat itself, um, will help to keep it um, help to keep it uh, flexible and soft. Um, you know, dust can get in, dust and dirt can get in on that and will cause the cap to get really hard to, to sit in on, um, to be able to snap down on that, um, causing burrs. Um, so, and then, you know, also in the cap itself, there's a little, I don't know if you can see right here, this little thing right there, there's a little spring in there and over time, those do start to, um, to open up a little bit. Um, so once, unfortunately, once those start to loosen up, you'll often find that it's too easy to put your, to snap, and then you can't get it, um, you, it, you can't get it to, to stay. Um, when that happens, you do need to replace the cap, um, but you can certainly keep the stud working, um, working well. A small piece of steel, steel wool um, will help to keep that stud clean. Um, and you can see, you know, and see there what we, you know, what we're recommending. And like, it's like, um, if anybody's familiar, I'm sure you're all <laughs> familiar with battery terminals, um, but that's, um, that will help to keep those functioning um, properly. You never want to use a petroleum based product. Um, you can use, we recommend a product called McLube Sail Coat. It's a, um, it's a dry lubricant um, and it really works great on a number of different um, applications. Snaps, uh, any types of, any types of fasteners, lift, some of you may be familiar with lift a dot, lift the dot fasteners. Um, it works great with those. Um, and you know certainly with zippers it will help to keep your the slides um, and the zipper itself well lubricated and while we're talking about zippers um so there are very few zippers out in the industry right now that will not deteriorate over time with salt and uv um there are a few products that are um 
UV resistant now that some of the manufacturers are starting to come out with. Um, for general canvas, they are ridiculously expensive and very few shops, if any, are using them as a standard practice. Um, again, the best way to keep your zippers working well is just to use them. Keep them, you know, keep zipping up and up and down. Um, when you're cleaning your canvas, make sure you hose off your zippers as well. That will certainly help. Um, lubricating zippers, McLube sail coat, as I said, is a great way to uh, dry lubricant to keep those um, to keep those working. Never use any never use any kind of petroleum based product. Um, if you're really in a pinch grab some chapstick and, <laughs> and it works well. Uh, I, don't, I don't like to do that on a regular basis because it will tend to get gummy as it, as, as it heats up, but in, in a pinch, it's, it'll work. Um, okay. So I just wanted to give you all a quick overview. Um, I knew, save, I figured I would save some time for, for questions that you have specifically. Um, I did want to let everybody know that um, you know, our schedule does fill up really quickly, um, especially during migration times. Um, we are, uh, so if you think that you're going to need Canvas and you want to wait until you come into Hampton, um, it's really best to get with us ahead of time and get that scheduled in. Um, currently, our schedule right now, because of, um, you know, everyone buying boats last year, we're, we're averaging about 16 to 18 weeks out for new canvas. Um, repairs, we can generally fit those in, um, in between. So, you know, if you are coming in and you've had something, you know, if you're coming into Hampton and you've had something let go or you need a zipper replaced or, um, or something of that nature, we can generally try to fit those in, in between bigger jobs. Um, but, you know, we did have, <laughs> we had one year, um, one of the, one of the offshore cruising races came in and we literally had a 50 foot sailboat that showed up on Monday and said, I need a Bimini Dodger connector and an enclosure and I need it done in a week. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that is not realistic for us, uh, but we can certainly help you out um, with anything. You know, if you need supplies, um, if you need um, you know, cleaning supplies, we can certainly help you out with that as well. Um, and as I said, repairs, we, we generally try to fit in as, um, as, a, as we can. So uh, with that, I will open it up to some questions. Let me go. Great. Down. We do actually have a couple of questions, Charlene, that came in over the chat. Um, there are several actually. So I'll start with Michael, who's asking, how do you remove light scratches and abrasions from strata glass? Um, well, hang on, let me stop share here so I can see it. Okay. Um, really there's once any of these products start to scratch, there's not a lot that you can do to eliminate the scratching. Um, there's products out there on uh, Novus is one. They have uh, multi-step um, multi products that you can try um, that will help to, if they don't really remove the scratching, they more fill the scratches in. Um, but you want to be careful with that too, because you can sometimes cause more damage than you're helping um, by adding more abrasion to, um, you know, to the clear. Um, yeah, really, once they start to scratch, it's really difficult to remove, remove scratching. Really, the only glass out there that you can, that you can literally remove scratching from is, acryl is acrylic, um, and it's a buffing process. It needs to be buffed out. I do not recommend using a buffer um, on Strataglass or any of any non-coated um, clear. Um, it's, again, and it's it, you've got to be really careful because you can do more damage than than good. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, also from Michael, and I think it's a two-part question. Um, you mentioned mild soap. Are you referring to something in the area of like an ivory dish soap, or what about OxyClean laundry detergent, or or do you request do you suggest any specific kind of soap? Yeah, ivory is a great product. Woolite is a great product to use. It's very, um, that's a very mild product. Um, OxyClean is great for stains. 
Um, you know, any of these products, you, the, the OxyCleans are, you know, I tend to like that more than using bleach products um, just because of the thread issue. Um, anything that's got bleach in it, if you don't have the Teflon thread, you, again, you could be you could be causing yourself more problems down the end because down the line because your threads are going to start to deteriorate. Um, but yeah, ivory soap is great. Um, OxyClean is great for using for you know more stubborn stains, um, you know bird droppings and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, definitely um, animal light is another great one. That's great. And Michael this says thank you very much. That was good practical advice. Thank you so much. That was um, thank you. That's all the questions. I think. And I think we're on to Linda and Claire. Screen shared here. It's so great to be here tonight. Thanks for having us. Linda and I, as owners of Short Up, a local eco tour business, um, are excited to join the webinar tonight, especially since we read on your website that one of your most cherished traditions is your SSCA clean wake policy, which states to leave a clean wake is to show respect for others and for our environment so that those who follow in our wake will be warmly welcomed. What a great philosophy. It shows that we automatically have something in common. Linda and I have a deep passion for the environment, particularly in regards to the Chesapeake Bay and our local waterways. Let me just uh, change our slide here. Nope, trying to change my slide, hold on, thanks. Um, we have a story to tell here in Hampton too, as so much of our present day ecology stems from a rich history and heritage that is unique to Hampton. Oysters is a great example of that. In this, uh, picture, you can see that there's a postcard of a pile of oyster shells in Hampton from back in the day. And it was quite an impressive pile, obviously, because they made a postcard out of it. Um, um, you know, that pile, though, has led to having to do a lot of restoration efforts. And on the right side of the screen, you see a picture of us interacting with our tour participants um, showing them the oyster garden that we have down at the Hampton City Dock uh, in an effort to help restore oysters to the bay. We often say that our experiences include a little bit of history, a little bit of nature, and sometimes a little bit of beer. Um, we offer walking tours, kayaking tours, and other eco experiences. We have tours open to the public like our paddle and pint tour or our walk talk taste tours. Plus we have a variety of pearls that we like to string together to create a custom experience for any age and at any time of the year. In these pictures, you can see the first picture we're inside the Hampton History Museum a real gem that's located in, within a short walk of the downtown docks. And the second picture shows um, some little kids hugging a great big tree. Um, that was a program we put together for them when they were visiting Hampton. And then the third picture we show us on one of our kayak paddles, uh, looking at this majestic magnolia tree that you all will pass when you come up the Hampton River. You'll pass it on the port side. And then lastly, we have um, that little bit of beer I was talking about. We're enjoying some craft beer at Bull Island Brewery um, right there uh, located next to the Hampton City Docks. Um, we have a fleet of six kayaks this season, or you can use your own boat for our tours. Our kayak tours leave from the kayak launch located right next to the public dock. Our walking tours also start right at the marina office or sometimes at the Hampton History Museum. We are both certified Virginia Eco Tour Guides. We are proud that our small business is a member of Virginia Green as well as with the Chesapeake Oyster Alliance. 
a coalition of organization and businesses committed to creating a healthier bay by adding 10 billion new oysters by 2025. We really look forward to welcoming you to Hampton and giving you a souvenir that will make your sea stories even better. Uh, please check us out on our website, www.shoredupva.com or on our Facebook page at shoredupva. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Until then, we wish you fair winds and following seas. Thank you. Great, we did have one question for you, Linda and Claire, and that is, do you have summer projects or do you need any interns? <laughs> Someone clearly <laughs> loving your work. We always love having some help and, um, and we always love sharing the unique gems that we have here uh, in Hampton. So please, please let us know if you'd like to come along and, and join us, that would be a lot of fun. Great. Well, thank you everybody. This has been a wonderful, wonderful webinar. And I should say a shout out to Jennifer Finley at Downtown Hampton who put this amazing group of panelists together. Um, I've been texting her all along. I think this is all just the kind of thing that we cruisers want to hear about because we are out for the experience. Um, we wanna find the best places to stay with the best access to the resources that we need along the way and the best experiences um, that we can have because we're all here to, to have experiences. So thank you so much. Uh, we hope to see you again. I know we're gonna be doing a series called the Chesapeake Bay Meander. We'll certainly be including these videos as part of that as a resource for everyone. Uh, for those of you who joined us, as a participant on the webinar. And for the many of you who I know are watching on YouTube live stream, we appreciate your, um, your time tonight. Thank you for joining. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Hampton. Thanks everyone. <laughs>